row of the middle tier of um, Twickenham's West End. I've got my rugby buddies with me, Austin and Ben and John and Mari, who I like a little bit more than the two on the right. Um, but it's great to have you company, uh, particularly if you're one of those whose club started the season but hasn't made it to the end. We all know how hard it's been, but we're thrilled to have you company and we hope you enjoy this. The two standard setters on the pitch over the last nine months then. And here are Mark McCall Saracens, who led the way at the top of the table from early October onwards. There's one change to the 15 that started the Northampton semi-final. Irone Maui has a big hour or so ahead, propping up the front row. Mako Vonapola has been struggling all week. He is out. What of Jackson Ray? One final game for a dyed-in-the-wool man of Saracens, retiring after this. And what of Owen Farrell? The ringmaster supreme against Saints into his eighth Premiership final. And how about this? Sale Sharks about to play their part in the final chapter. 17 years to the day since they did it for the last time. The North travelled south, full of hope. And Alex Anderson, great, to have his little pocket of calm. George Ford uh, against his school days pal Farrell, one of so many compelling storylines. They make one enforced change after downing defending champions Leicester two weeks ago. Sam Dugdale trusted to do a job at seven ahead of the injured Ben Curry. Tom Curry's still there, as is John O'Ross, albeit for the last time. The skipper will lead his side out and hope to lift the trophy before retiring. Benny the head-to-head. -head. Well, you can see the forward battle being one of immense physicality, but two players that know an awful lot against it, about each other, having stood together in Lions shirts, stood together in, here in England shirts, and against each other in a Premiership final. I think the battle between Hill and Otoji in the second row, crucial for this afternoon's outcome. Very physical packs are going to go head-to-head. And normally you'd say physicality is going to win it, but I think this game's going to be won by the mind and the mind of the two schoolmates, Farrell and Ford. They know each other inside out, whether it's field position, whether it's goal kicking, of which Ford has got 92%. That is going to be crucial today. Those two guys will decide this final. George Ford. Look where Sale's fabulous season has taken them. The fifth time the club have enjoyed their big day out at Twickenham, a second Premiership final. And Owen Farrell, the captain of Saracens, the personification really of what this club is about, the voice, its integrity. And a team full of wise old heads who know all about moments like these, walking out on the last day. It's been four years since they walked back as winners. in their change kits today, by the way, to help those of you watching who are colourblind. First time this has happened, Saracens in white rather than their usual black to avoid clashing with Sales Maroon. So we have a clear contrast to help the 1 in 12 men and 1 in 200 women who might otherwise dis struggle to distinguish between the kits. You'll know who Manu Tuolangi is when he has the ball. And the anthems. Northern accent by a couple of youth choirs from Bake Up and Rossendale. Big smiles on their big day. That's a, a first for the Premiership final. Never normally had the anthems, but just adding to the stature of it all. After all the 
Taylor being a bit part player in the Leicester story, the Freddie Burns story a year ago. Mark McCall Saracens determined that this season they have absolutely saved their best game until the last day of the season. And for sale, the words of Sir Alex Ferguson still in their ears, as you may have seen, delivered the first team talk of final week. At the start of the week, he popped into the Carrington training base. Not here to enjoy the day, he said. We're here to enjoy it. Likewise, Luke Pearce at the age of 35, a first ever Premiership final. He's been running touch for a decade, now he gets to blow a whistle given to him by the Devon Referee Society. A little rub of the ears, a hello to Olivia and Isabel. The day that champions are made. The 2023 Gallagher Premiership final, Saracens and Sale. And up towards a deep blue sky on a beautiful day that feels like a cup final day. That kind of weather. Sarah's in the white with the ball and immediately the first penalty. Sale just a little bit too over eager there and Sam Dugdale back to his feet. Just got trapped in Sam Dugdale, didn't he? It's a very, very cheap penalty to give away all that pressure cleared but not only that sale would be expecting to throw this ball into the line out on the halfway and now saracens immediately get an opportunity to give themselves the field position and the possession and it's something that saracens thrive on they love the possession sale very happy to defend for long periods jamie george's More. first throw to hugh tizard rustled it up to up uh, to halfway Quite over halfway, Aka van der Merwe making sure of that, but Saracen's able to um, ask the first few questions and kick from Ivan van Sale. Taken in by the right wing Tom Roebuck. Set Sail on their way with the opening try of the semi-final against Leicester. And Gus War battling away to get the ball and find Jean-Luc Dupré, disruptive heavyweight okay, boulder all season. Aka, stop. War with a kick to compete for. Go. Robert does what he could to get underneath it, but there are a few better than Alex Good aerially. George. Farrell, and up goes the first bomb. <laughs> That will come down with a big question mark on it. And the roars of the Saracen supporters as well went backwards, picked up by Tompkins. Now then, Van Sale and oof, first hefty run from Aroni Maui. Farrell again, what's on his mind to find Jackson Ray. Big booming tackle from Sale skipper John O'Ross. Huge from John O'Ross. Had to happen, couldn't allow the offload to come. Zeke Northern shoulders being tested early on. A little bit further wide to Tompkins. No way through. Northern shoulders standing firm for the time being until Farrell got the ball away beautifully. Offloaded by Tompkins that close. Bernal within touching distance of the line. Still Farrell. Gus Ward just got his arm in, referee's happy, pulled from Sale's arm away, didn't play the ball. With the penalty advantage, Lazowski to good, and now from Sale. Head down, six metres short. Tom, was it off the line break? Tompkins. He had George to his left. Tizard waiting, instead it's Satoje. Spilt, back for the penalty. Oh, really good from Saracens. Word for Sales' defence was huge. Really close to conceding the first try there. They've been the stingiest defence in terms of tries all season. Just did enough. But giving you a reason back, mate. That's enough now, okay? Luke Pearce happy that Gus War played the arm. It all came from a break from Farrell. He's allowed to cut back against the grain. A little bit slow defensively up from the guard position. Sale. And Farrell found the offload back on the Just inside. The clock, mate, okay? Yeah, you tell me, you tell me when there's 15 and then I'll. That wasn't me, that was Carl. Yeah. Shot clock? I can't see it. Where is it? Where is the freaking shot clock? Owen Farrell into oh, his eighth Premiership final.
Nobody has scored more points in them. Absolutely immense in the semi-final, astonishing performance. And he put Saracens ahead yeah. early on in the final. He Saracens does, three. He does, but something Sale need to look out for and be careful throughout the whole game when you're playing against Farrell is the first two defenders. Look how wide they are from each other and the third defender even further. You can't leave a six metre gap between the first defender and the second because Farrell will straighten you up and put a ball back on the inside and isolate that first defender. He does that so well because he stands square to the line. You have to have one, two and three, all within 10 metres, maximum distance. What's outstanding there is having made that initial left foot step to go back inside, how quickly he straightened up and dragged that guard defender over. Matoje not gathering cleanly, so free ball for Sale. First time we've got to mention Nick Schonert's name. Ford now with the ball in an attacking sense. First port of call is to Alangi and off he goes. War, Ford, and then Dupree. Two of the three Dupree brothers with us. Dan Dupree didn't make it. Saw hamstring for him, but here's his other big brother, Jean Luc Dupree. And now Sale win the penalty, and that's a decent riposte. <laughs> it is from War because he's milked it. He's absolutely milked that, and really well. Farrell knows he's on the wrong side, but he's far There's enough away from the ball side. to be stepped over. Just pretends the to have his feet nine. trapped underneath. Yeah. Make a better effort, please. Out of the way of the nine. It's hard for players because Post you know you've got to roll away. Often the clearest route to roll away is forwards and north, and you're not allowed to take out the nine's approach. There they are. They both make a big tackle together, maybe slightly offside anyway. Got away with it, rolled away. But then, as Austin said, Gus War, oh, I can't get to the ball, ref. Lying on top of each other, he lies on top of them, wins his team the penalty, chance to go three all. George Ford's final a year ago lasted 24 minutes before the ankle injury that led to his premature departure. Still ended up on the winning side that day for Leicester. And Ford draws his side this season, level in the final. Saracens three, Sale three. Well, not just the kick, but that's a real settling phase for George Ford. Great management, Tr trying to spread that Saracens defence wide. Really good pass options. Very, very composed as the playmaker in at ten. Not taken by the fullback of Carpenter, who took a, a hefty blow as he fell into Maui. <sighs> He's lucky Maui there. Slightly out of control, just gets low enough in the tackle not to make it dangerous. Use it, please. Good, with good distance. Good close enough, but nicely off tapped back by Roebuck. Off his shoulder, off his shoulder, no knock on. And Austin and Ben talk pre-match about the importance of, of the kick chase and the, the protection around the catcher. Sail, use it please. Both sides very happy, eager to play rugby Three with the ball in hand, but they're not silly. They won't play from ridiculous <laughs> positions and War practicing his kicks a lot early on. Varnish knock on. That went forwards off a, a sail See hand. So this with, um, with the advantage for Saracens. Driven up by Farrell. Fun sail spins it away beautifully to good. Ooh, he was asking a lot of Earl. Picked up by a hopeful Roebuck, but the whistle will tell him that we're coming back. Just me and Ben have spotted the same thing, something that we did in the demo. Just looking at the two contrasting cradles and the ability of the winger to get past them. Here's the first one, look how good the cradle is from Saris. An average protection it gives to Good. He manages to get a really easy catch. When we zoom in, look how easy the ball is. There's nobody around him, he can get up high above everybody else, take the ball and then make ground. What you want to do though is smash it or make it competitive, Ben. And that, as you saw it from the next kick, it was really evident. Yeah, the second one, they don't get that balance right on the touchline, which allows the chase to go on the outside. Just look at the chase on the outside around the touchline. He gets past Maitland, gets his hand up there, forces no, the error. Late. Thank you. And they now get First Sale to put into the scrum falls. on the halfway line. 
just that one bit of extra support on the outside channel to make Let's wait to see what happens on the winger have to run right round you. And this time Robot gets it spot on and forces the error. And a better kick as well. First scrum. Over lean sail. That's a little bit of over eagerness. Too much. Scrum Two, they'll just take the scrum again. This time uh, Saracen's put in, but McIntyre will be really disappointed with that. And he's got um, six year old memories of the 2017 final with Wasps, the one they lost agonisingly to uh, Exeter in extra time. Manchester born and bred in a team that speaks with a heavy Lancastrian, Mancunian, Cheshire accent. So many players, children of the North. None of them even come through the original Sale FC team that still play at um, good old homely Haywood Road. And continuing frustration at the scrum, however. Um, he wouldn't have been part of it from the off Marco Bonapola. He was named as a replacement. He's been struggling with a back injury all week. They gave him as much time as possible, but he didn't make it. It's going all right for his scrum at the moment without him. McIntyre there trying to make amends for leaning early. Smashes in as hard as he could to try and disrupt, but doesn't hold his feet. You can see, slides straight Simon, down right in front Simon, of the referee. Please control your weight. Just that thing took players talk about. Don't compound one error with another. He's desperate to make amends to his team for a cheap free <laughs> kick the other way. Ripped down by Ezekwe quickly away to Earl, and inevitably George Knock was off. there, but he's dropped it. And now Sale with the counter attack and Dupree. I think Jamie George was out then. He's in trouble. Yeah, Jamie oh, George. He's in big trouble. Oh, yeah. The whistle has to go. And well done, Johnny Hill. He recognized it's the danger immediately. He knew the distress that Jamie George was. In and Johnny well, Hill made absolutely no sure no that the referee did him. as well. It's really sad. Jamie George won't no play rush. any further part in this game. Clear May signs of a potential line. concussion, which means no HIA. He'll have to be removed. Staggered as he got up, even after Johnny Hill went back. That is no foul play. There is nothing in the world in who no Pierce foul just explaining he's happy no, that. George yeah. ducks under the tackle at the last minute. It'll be a scrum where we stop. Yeah. No foul play. Always Ben. Yes. Luke Pierce on it straight away. No foul play. But Nothing more yeah. that Tom teams. Curry could do. You choose uh, to hit second. so hard. You take the consequences. You the ref. The You're in he control. Drops his height. But but losing Mako and George so within the first well, ten no, minutes of a final is huge for Saracens. I know they've got a fantastic squad, and this guy is an excellent rugby player. More around the field, but you're losing two big leaders. What's he given here, Luke? This is now a much bigger test for Saracens. Theo Dan, 22-year-old, doing something he'll never yeah. forget. This is much closer involving to himself in a Premiership start. final for the very first time, much earlier than he would have imagined. But here he is, and just from a sale perspective now, with Theo Dan. Obviously, try and put the heat on him a little bit with this scrum, but having given away a penalty at the last time. But they'll want an early line out for Theo Dan. Try and get Johnny Everybody Hill into him, not expecting to come on this early. We only scrum when the ball really is. Really good player around the field, maybe not quite the accuracy in the darts in terms of his throwing that Jamie George has yet. And that will be an area that Sale will look to exploit. What's the odds here from a left hand scrum? Manu on the field. Crouch. Straight one on one with Farrell. Actually, I don't know who'd win that. Just to say, by the way, confirmation from the touchline that it is a permanent change. There's no HIA needed. That's the last we've seen of Jamie George on the pitch today. That's a big moment for McIntyre, isn't it? Number three facing straight towards me. It's on McIntyre's side. He's number three, his head's fading straight towards opposite me. Opposite number, Marco Riccioni. Referee just explaining that his hips went out towards the touchline. He ended up facing directly towards the referee. Manu Tulagi very happy with that. Doesn't get a chance to carry, but he might get a chance off a line out just outside the 22. Number seven.
Saracens, that's your one. <coughs> Under Merber to help. And now to Alangi. A reasonably fast ball for War. Spins it to Ford. Funder Merber let it go to him. And here's Tom Roebuck. Club's top try scorer this season. McIntyre running into a Toje who was up very quickly. Once again, to Alangi, a double shift. Oh, that's been reefed away. Farrell took it off him left hand. Tucked under the ball, really good. This could be a 50-22. What a turnaround that is. Oh. It's incredible. What a 10 seconds for Saracens. Well, say all no. They want to get to Alangi into the game. He's already carried once after this. Goes again on that outside arc. He knows exactly what's coming. He can feel the rip before the ball's actually reefed out. And what a 50-22 that is, gives them prime field position. And Theo Dan, his first throw. Dan actually went for Tuolangi off Number the three. back of the, like, the previous line-out when Tuolangi carried. Got a good shot on him, didn't quite manage to bring him to ground, but certainly Saracen's defensive style is to go and hit big early. It doesn't quite matter if you don't complete the tackle, but you have to stop that ability of... Nah, point. Players being able to break the tackle, win the contact, <laughs> because they know Sale thrive when they're going to the front foot, but they struggle a little bit when they're stopped dead. Bring a delay here because Nick Shona um, yeah, is um, taking some running repairs. He's one of those players who's absolutely thrived this season. Shona, even in his 30s, love working under Alex Sanderson. Dorian West, Pete Anglesey. We've got some defensive work to do here More. from the 50-22. Saracens ball at the line, line on the floor. And Dan takes it away. Right? Very Sorry. early replacement for George, but yeah, I I he's been wonderful this early. season. Running forwards with the ball, and Atoje does just that. Takes on Ford. Ford does what he can to hold him up. <laughs> Penalty, bang in front of the posts. Better effort, That's please, a coach coming. killer. John right, Hill, isn't it? right in front of the post, the, the tackle's made, he's just adding his weight to it, it's already stopped, the momentum's been done, you may as well get into guard position, instead he falls right on top, but not just on top, he falls through, it's a good carry from Atoji, but look, the tackle's been made, Curry's brought him down, they've got him stood up now, he doesn't need to do anything, he needs to back out, push away from that, instead he finds himself on the far side, blocking off the ball, and three points, not intelligent. He's played in enough of these, Johnny Hill. This is his fifth Premiership final after playing in four for Exeter. A simpler kick as Owen Farrell has had all season. Saracens back ahead, 6-3. There is an air that both teams, what, first 20 minutes, they have to win this physical battle. We've seen some probably more dynamic shots than are necessary. I just think that the defensive coach has said they cannot get the upper hand, you cannot give them those one, two extra metres in contact. We know Ford's going to be targeted by Saracen's big runners and a couple of the boys coming in to assist and giving away the penalty. Jackson Ray, a couple of claps before he gathered the ball. This is it for him. 15 years, his 309th and final game as a Saracen, Jackson Ray. Saracen's use it. Van Sale, Maitland leads the chase, but... Take for Carpenter. One of those sale players who's come from nowhere really to be front and centre of our attention over the course of the season. John O'Ross, another of those for whom this is the final curtain call. Sale, use it, please. <coughs> Just see the shape of the Nine. Saracens players trying to create that shield now. Backwards, then off his shoulder, play on. So still, sail ball. Jean-Luc Dupree goes in. Sam Dugdell, 23-year-old, on the biggest day of his rugby life so far, invited to fill the hole left by Ben Curry. 
Saracens. Saracens have stolen it. Back, Atoje involves Luke Pearce, who wasn't a bad player in his day, but had no part of that. <laughs> I tell you what, routine. I think we're seeing some really bad decisions from the forwards here. Not that pass, that's not his fault, but the carry before from Jean-Luc Dupria. It's crazy rugby. Picks it up by himself into three people, gets turned over. At your angle. I was to him. Stay straight, You've got to keep your head yeah, in the first 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing that. I'm holding at the breakdown. Uh, Maro, Maro. I understand when they put themselves on the wrong side that they're liable to be penalised. Please don't try and milk Tim it by just Foley is our TMO today. No, Cole Dixon and, and Christoph Ridley have There's the flags. And that Tom just wants to have another so look at. Um, um, it's not about playing Luke, he's just tied to the ball and just, uh, he's just absolutely slacked. Latest um, injury. I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a fine balance in there. Hearing Tom in the background saying there's no foul uh, play. Tony, I've spoken to him about cramping you in. Make sure you can't move, OK? Time on. Marco, let's go! Quick at the ball. So ben Earl nearly secure a turnover. They'll just need to be careful. They're just relying on that physicality, but they have to be a slightly quicker not get isolated as Austin was talking about slightly quicker with their weight, support players and not allowing the likes of Ben Earl, Riccioni, Maui, Theo Dan over the ball. Yes, down. Crouch. Bind. Set. Set. Beginning to enjoy themselves at the scrum. That's Riccioni again, and just before the scrum. I'll talk, after. I'll talk to the next one. Number three. Luke Pierce and Riccioni had a bit of a conversation, just trying to clarify what the tight head wanted. It obviously didn't sink in. Again, Luke Pierce over that side this time, making an action to suggest that oh, yes, Riccioni's. Hips come out and he rolls in right in front of the referee. Same offence, it's twice now, and that's building a picture in Luke Pierce's mind. Saracen's one of those clubs where the, the referees go in regularly each week to keep those conversations live and current. So, you know, complaining that Saracens don't know how things are likely to be refereed in that situation. Anyway, to draw sail level. Six apiece. You've got to think, Nick, it's been well balanced so far, but both sides will have spoken about the scoring profile. Saracens don't necessarily start that well, but if, if you look at sail, they're about 101 points better off in the first 20 minutes normally through the season. But just a few mistakes at the wrong time can cost you. And you can play a completely different game in this match than you have in the previous 20-odd. One of the features of Saracen's season has been, A, how much fitter they are this season because of the game they're trying to play, the game they are playing, but also how strong they've been in the final 20. Been very few who've scored more points, won more matches in the last quarter in Sale will know that. Well, we both played in a Seven lot of finals. There's another opportunity for that's an easy out, but... We played in a lot of finals. Sometimes you play as you've played all season, but then that's very rare. Most of the time, it's a completely different structure to your game. This day changes you as a team and as an individual, and it's how you yep. deal with it the best, as we heard from all the guys in the build-up. There's um, Phil Morrow, who's played a, a big part in what Sale have been about this season and has for so many seasons. He's their head of performance, and they've, they've changed the way they've built their fitness, their high-intensity sessions this season, Benny, have been of an even higher intensity to make sure that they can play this slightly faster ball-in-hand game. There will still be people at home that, because of how Saracens used to play, think Saracens are a defensive side that don't want the ball. They've completely flipped that on the head over the last couple of years, and they are more than happy to be in possession, and it helps when you've got big units like Nick Ezekwe nicking the opposition's line-out ball. But still at the line out. Ray goes in to provide the protection for Fun Sale. Maitland again, always, as always, a willing chaser. And oh, yeah, he did brilliantly. Came down with it. In the red with Alex Anderson in a minute or two. Let's just see where this latest attack takes us. Tompkins has 
Sale do what they can to repel him. Bouncing ball across the bonnet of Riccioni. Maitland and Roebuck clash knees, and at first it looked like Roebuck had come worse off, but Maitland is really struggling now. He's behind the Sale defensive line here. Azikwe once again, huge hit. Oh, Maitland looks in a lot of bother. Not the game, Luke, not the game! Oh. Interrupted for a, a number of legitimate reasons, injuries to a couple of players, and um, another reason that we are less enamoured with. Let's, in the meantime, have a chat with um, Alex Anderson. Um, top line thoughts out. Chaos at the moment, isn't it? Well, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just more concerned about Tom Robert. I'm sure later for that matter. Yeah, they're both. They're both down, and um, those who are on the pitch and shouldn't be on the pitch are being taken off. Yeah, no Coming back to the game, you know, those two being on the floor shows how competitive and how aggressive both sides are approaching the kicking battle, particularly down this wing at the moment. That seems where a lot of the ball is being kicked in the contestable kick battles, and it's a bit tit for tat at the moment, really. I think Tom's getting some more of the tap backs and catches like clean catches like that that Sean took uh, that's just like golden possession that um, I think we're dealing with some of the transition quite well and the collisions for the most part we seem to have the better off um, that's why I had to go back to the boot there and stick it up um, but it's going to be an arm wrestle until one of the team teams it one of the teams gets some of that transition ball back uh, you know deep within and in the territory Austin and Ben pre-game, Al, talked about the way that um, Saracens kind of provide that protective cradle around the catcher. How do you deal with that as the team trying to get onto it? Um, you've got to change your, your, your point of approach for that competing player. So you'll see Sean Maitland and Tom Roebuck uh, changing their line in and around the rook to try and attack some of the slower players in that cradle or that, that glove. It's really about to play it, you've got to beat for speed. And if those two things fail, you just beat for height, you just climb over and look to break the catch. All right, brilliant. Cheers, Al. We, we, we had slightly longer to chat there than we normally have, but um, thank it's you. And, uh, yeah. Open it for Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get on with it. Yeah, let's do it. Cheers, Al. Unfortunately, the protesters are wearing the same colour as all, okay, all the medics. It's all sorted out now. Elliot Daly has, has come on for Sean Maitland, there he is, very little rugby recently, 40 minutes as a starter against Bath three weeks ago after a hamstring injury, he came off the bench against Northampton in the semi-final, and uh, well a couple of very early changes for Saracen to deal with, Daly for Maitland who never recovered from that clash, and Jamie George bang to the head, Theo Dan is on. I think Maitland's has bigger loss actually in a lot of ways because he's so good in the backfield chasing kicks He's very secure really reliable under the high ball I'm Not saying Elliot's not but he's a different type of player in some ways actually this might force Saracens into an even more attacking game Because his best rugby when it was when he was linking with Farrell in those first ten games of the season Getting that secondary pass getting real width and when those two start to click together. They're very difficult to stop Having said that, Robot's still there. He's not 100% sure about his knee. They might just look to test it early on with Daly. Oh, and um, Earl goes one way as Pancel went the other, and this creates the opportunity for um, a chasing mail into the ball. Oh, oh, it's a penalty try. And it is a penalty try. Oh, Mailing's called back. Yellow card. Big moment, big, big moment after the delay for the interruption. Huge moment, and Malins makes his own luck here because he doesn't hesitate. He just goes to top speed and stays there. Doesn't look to react to the ball. Sale, watch, they're a little bit slower. They want to look where the ball's bouncing. Malins just, Malins just goes past them. He just thinks, I'll back myself. That causes the confusion at the back. And then Curry, no choice. He knows Malins going over. He makes the tackle, gives away the seven-pointer anyway. And he's in the bin. The only thing that the Sale fans might say is that Wall was pushed in the back by Malins before he got to the ball, but I don't think it was enough. I 
he was just being competitive towards it. Well, there's a couple of minutes in the Premiership <laughs> final go. That was fairly dramatic. Yeah, you could say that. Great weight of kick as well. Superb ball through for Malins. Didn't have to break stride. Right into the danger Sorry, zone for it. fullback and wing converging. Trying the semi final that took him to um, a dozen all told this season, 10 in the Premiership, and absolutely responsible for the penalty try. And Tom Curry with 10 minutes just to, just to call off. Saracens were absolutely switched on as we got back going again. And Aka van der Merwe, packed without Curry. Hill draws it down. Van der Merwe working hard to get himself back onto the ball. War comes in, lets van der Merwe know that he's there and he's needed the little scrum half. Killed the contest by using his hands. Talk so much about the breakdown, Ben, and we know it's going to be big today, it always is. But I know that Luke Pierce has been talking to both clubs this week no, about that desire to get quick ball, and he just wasn't but getting it there. Ben, just but that allowed, over eager from that Saracens. Ben to steal the ball. Did a really good job of getting through and disrupting, first of all, Thunder Merva. And then as he offloaded, they got through to Gus War, but that secondary drive to get over the top of the ball and beyond it didn't come in from the right angle and that's a cheap cheap opportunity for George Ford not only to cut the lead but to run down a few well minutes really of a couple of minutes of this yellow card clock well, when sale were winning here for the one and only time so far 17 years ago the new south stand was still being built those seats in the lower tier had um, only just gone in, it was all cranes and concrete and scaffolding and he would have been kicking into an empty stand then, but... That's a, collector's, <laughs> yeah. that's a collector's piece, isn't okay, it? Let's it go hasn't please. missed a lot this season. Oh, some frustration in that clearing kick. Good. Ray offering himself. Hugh Tizard looks um, the best option to the left, but um, in the end, Fonsell with the kick. But he didn't go as far as he would have wanted to do it. Allowed Tizard, however, to get his big mitts on it. And Saracens have it. Here goes Lazowski. Offload to his mate Tompkins. Fonsell and Malin's in a little bit of space. Farrell's not far away. Malin's cutting back inside to Alangi. Van Sale, Ray, Lazowski, Tompkins slips it away to Aroni Maui. So, Jay, hear the hit, hear the exertions. Dan, on early on for the injured Jamie George, if you're just switching on. Good. Farrell ooh, held up nicely and back inside and the outlet provided by good Maui he's trying thank you northern boys is ringing around Twickenham an Italian prop Marco Riccioni Daly loose Tualangi was White very first, nearly on it. Then by Red. White Saracens knock on. Sale scrum. They're not winning that game line battle like they normally do, are they, Saracens? They're getting smashed at the tackle line. Some of the carries. These are the sort of passes between Seven. these two guys. If you Seven. get Daly Seven. good and Farrell linking together, you get width. Seven and you get to the corner Seven. quite quickly. Not on that occasion. If he takes that, man, he, he's down. gone. They're trying to play with a bit of balance. Saracens, aren't they? We saw them play wide, wide, and, and almost not take any steps forward to be able to get round. Any time a tackle came in, they were trying to keep it alive, but a 
one point they realised they needed to set Where a target, the field, they please. needed to hit it up in midfield. Maro Atoji, Where is he on the field? running onto the ball, stopped dead, and as a result, all the momentum went out of Saracen's attack. They don't want to get embroiled, Mark McCall's men, in that close range, close in and around the breakdown, one-on-one -on -one carrying. They know they need to be smarter, but occasionally you need to go route one just to keep the opposition honest, keep them narrow to create that space in the wide channel that Saracens are looking to exploit. It's also been really educational watching Saracens play with the ambition that we've talked about this season. And part of that uh, is about a more compact shape to the game, or so that they talk about shorter, sharper passes, making sure that they're, that they're cleaner at the breakdown. And the role of the second and third players in, the, 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 the sweepers, the clearers out, close to the ball carriers, making sure that, that that works. But they're just not quite getting that right at the moment. Yeah, I think there can be a misconception that you gain width by standing wide. You don't necessarily have to stand there. And you know, you see some junior rugby, some kids rugby, where they stand really wide and make it difficult to connect to one another. But standing really close and doing your skill sets really well is just as easy to make width. Riccioni, another offence going against him, this time just a free kick, so Sale will have another go. No, 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 no. Riccioni really not sure what the referee wants from him at the moment. We've already had too many scrums in this game. I say we just ban him. Okay, that's it. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. I think we should, Nick, yeah. Come on, Simon. What you would say is that Simon McIntyre has rebalanced very nicely after a couple of early frustrating scrums from his perspective, and he very much is on top of Riccioni right now, and not many have done that this season. Set. Down they go again. Okay, quick we were just talking this about this time. Saracens unable to break on, down the midfield of Sale. They look good when they're wide, wide, but you can see Sale just winning that battle of the game line at the moment with their carries. Christoph. He's made the trick in the mouth shake once or twice down the years. It might not be long before Luke Pierce's patience runs out here. Well, oh, Mark McCall thinks he needs to make a change because... Please strum when the ball's in, not before. Number one. This is becoming the story of the game. This is the only thing, really, that's going against Saracens at the moment. No, there's loads, and I'm Royal getting a little West. bit fed up with it now, so... I'll be happy with things. Yeah. <laughs> but having given away the free kick, Sale then obviously take the scrum, get it upgraded to a penalty, and that's why you got the big celebrations from George Ford and all the backs. Uh, Ian Pill will be less happy, Saracen's forwards coach, working alongside Juan Fagajo as well on the scrums all week. We took some old Albanians. But what Sale are doing via the scrums is giving themselves a, a toehold, more than a toehold. Only tried the final so far, the penalty try. But Sale. Setting quiz questions. Ross. Oh, that's nicely done. Dugdale off the base and picked up by Thunder Merver. And there's some momentum, some hefty momentum to what Sale are all about here. Once again, Dugdale very low, mining almost under Saracen's defensive wall. And they're putting themselves within muscle striking distance, particularly with Tirolani there. Down was there quickly, but too quickly. Penalties on its way. Atoji goes in to dislodge the ball, but not enough. Let it go. John O'Ross looking for it. Shown it away to his right hand side. They go the other way. They're having a look. Still not quite. Ross. Dugdale. Fundamerva. Saracen sandbagging. Fundamerva tries to go over the top. 
Might be there. They think they're there. Johnny Hill leads the request. Oh, thank you. Hands away, hands away, hands away. Are you Luke Pierce. Acker, Acker. I think it's on his arm. Do you believe you scored? He did not score. You think you have? Honestly, yeah, let's. Okay. Wow, well, Luke Pierce asked Acker. the question. On the field, he asked no Acker van der Merwijk. He thought he'd scored the South African team. Okay. Yeah, really, really good referee. Do we need to waste time with a TMO decision, or do you know that the ball wasn't grounded? Acker van der Merwijk thinks he did get it down. Hang on, just give me a sec. It's on the ground, but oh, was right. it short originally? Now it's a, now it's a try. Is it immediate? Just bear with me. I'm just going to verify that it's over the line. Just bear with me, please. I think the way Atoji dives in at the end to try and hide it shows that he thinks it's on the line. Yeah. Or don't say it. It will be. Yeah. Just go one more. Just whether it's an immediate placement, isn't it? I think he might be short initially. Let's have a listen to the uh, conversation. Now it's on the line, yeah, but is that so a second yeah, move? Uh, the board does actually ground, uh, ground on the line, so yeah. overturn your on-field decision, you may award the try. Tom Foley, in front of his own little screen in the car park, gives the thumbs up to Aka van der Merwe and Alex Sanderson sale. They're in the try scoring business. What a few minutes for the front row of Sale. Got the field position, battered away at the line, and then Aka van der Merwe just short, but because he didn't propel himself with his knees or his feet and just straightened up his body, Tom Foley awards the score. And Sale right back in it with George Ford able to add the extra to level it. Into the final 10 minutes of the first half. Nip and tuck. 13 all. And with less than a minute on the yellow card clock as well, what a 10 minute period for Sale Sharks. Short, stabby Nine restart. Sale with the, uh, the knock on advantage. Use it, please. Advantage over for the knock. Oh, he's oh, overrun it. Red over the red. 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 Penalty against Red. No way through for good, and that's because Aaron Reed had rather overdone it. Yep. Uh, Tom Curry about to come back on. No, but he can't overrun and smash into it. Here he comes. He's wandering around Twickenham barefooted yesterday, enjoying the feel of the grass under his feet. He'll be reacquainting himself with the feel of grass under his boots now after 10 minutes in the cooler. Just grounding himself, Nick. <coughs> Coming back down to earth. <laughs> On the back row, stratosphere. And there's his brother, who'd love to know what the... Um, Twickenham grass feels like today. Then he gets the applause. Ben Curry, hamstring injury in the semi final. Such a shame. Might well play against him when it comes to the World Cup as well, but we will see. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Did feel it was a huge loss for Sale last week. Probably couldn't have lost a worse player. But the rugby gods have conspired against Saracens a little bit with injuries in them. First 25 minutes of this game. What a kick from Elliot Daly. The 15 metre line on the halfway. He's put into five metres. Well, Daly off for of Maitland. Uh, and Saracen certainly benefiting from Daly's kicking prowess. Now then, Saracen's quickly into this line out, taken down by Nick Azikwe. Curry, Curry goes in. Penalty coming. Fun sale, therefore, with free ball. Farrell and good, just holds it up. Oh, escapes the clutches of the defence somehow, and then pops Number it away to Tompkins. Yep. Thanks. Farrell, oh, that's nicely done, and this is Malins, and that's beautiful. 
A try befitting of a final. Once again, the ringleader, Owen Farrell. Once again, a Premiership try scorer. Max Malins. Just outstanding from Owen Farrell. Malins again, his timing perfect. As he creates a second try, gets to score it himself, gets his own name on the, tee, on the score sheet this time. But watch Farrell here. Good drifts out, trying to get Sale to drag out and widen their defensive line. Then they search back inside, but now Farrell, just that little delay, invites Tuolangi to hit him. That slight pause as soon as Tuolangi bites out of the line, he just lifts it into the air. And May Malins at full tilt, timing perfect, never going to be caught. Clock Premiership final, used up most of his 60 seconds and here's the try. He's laughing at him, Farrell, on the way back as well. He knows exactly what he did. In that scenario, when the game breaks up, last thing you can do is step out the line trying to get a big hit. So as Manu's a fantastic defensive guy, when he does his own agenda, he creates space. And against a side like Sarri's and Farrell's ability to offload to real pace in Maylands, it took some finishing. It's just a detriment defensively to your team. Kevin Sorrell, the backs coach, off his feet. And then uh, a soaring Maru Atoje with the restart. Test for Carpenter. Deflected into the arms of McIntyre. Push, foot, push. Gus Ward, phenomenal season for him. From left stage to very much front and centre for Sale Scrum Half. So much so that Rafi Quirk. Look at the back foot. Look at the back we were foot. talking an awful lot about last season. He's on the bench today. He's had his own injury problems. Quirk's kick will fall just outside the 22. Good. Theo Dan rolls into the conversation. Daily hustling, but he's got a long way to go to get to the ball before Carpenter did. Curry wants it, has it. Final five minutes of um, an eventful first 40 in this Gallagher on. Premiership final. Kick taken by Malins, and he did really well to keep it alive, and here goes Lazowski. He's got Malins to his right, could be a very big moment, this. Should have given that. Got a steal, brilliant turnover from Curry. Stepped in, claimed it. McIntyre. <coughs> Mara, use the sail, please. Taken in, so no 50 Taken, Taken in. back into his own oh. half. So, as wonderful a kick as that is, it will be Sales throw, but Austin, you're still smiling. I don't think he wants it back, Nick. I <laughs> think because it's not their no, lineup. It's in. a brilliant kick under a lot of pressure as well. You've seen a couple of really nice little 50 20 so far, but look at that. That's a brilliant shot as well. Thank you. It's not like Wall's out of position. It's not like there's nobody there. He's got about one and a half metres to land that ball in. Johnny Hill. And create some space for Akavanda Merva now. Three big jumpers in there. Now they've shortened yep. the line out. So yep. just Atoji and Azikwe. Azikwe, the primary defensive player. And they get out of jail. Sam Dugdale and our little motorised warthog. Aka van der Merwe <laughs> linking up. He holds his arms in the air, but he did all right. They got themselves out of a, a tricky hole. Does he know that you call him a motorised no. warthog? Please don't tell him. Please don't tell him. We won't, Nick. 
Ezeke, once again, he's been busy soaring high. And Tompkins, loose ball, it somehow found its way out to good. And then Daly. Ball didn't play along. Good option from Daly, though. He, he would have preferred it to stay in field and put pressure <laughs> on, but again, Sorry. Van der Merv has to find a, a way out of this position. Lovely from Farrell again. We've seen a couple of those from him this year. That no look out the back, just aware of where all his support players are. And Daly would have wanted that to kick off a little bit and come back in field, but might not get away with that easy ball to the front again this time. Closing the gap, Longer line out now. Oh, it's an easy get out. Maro Atoji closing the line out. He was in the middle. It's only a free kick, Georgia. Okay? It's a free kick. Thank you. <coughs> Dan, ooh, that's nicely done to pick out a toe, Jake. Funcell whips it away Take to it Farrell. In, Tompkins, and he immediately finding the width. That missed pass to pick out Malins. Malins has been busy, and likewise... Ball's out. Earl. Oh, nicely done by Tizard. Farrell under pressure, but gets it away to Lazowski. Now Lazowski beautifully to Daly. Might need to come back in field to... Find some of his white-shirted mates. Lazowski, Tizard, damn! The accelerating in, trying to ask that question on the angle. Maui. Bajian starting one of these for the first time. Farrell, Earl. He's tipped up by Tuolangi. Jackson Ray. Farrell once more, and then good, <sighs> tips it over the top, and Daly kicks it over the top, bouncing ball, never easy, never easy to deal with, but Gus Ward did well, and that'll do, a first 40, full of plenty, God save the King before kick-off for the first time, early, orange-coloured protests, three tries, 33 points, Saracens ahead at half-time at Twickenham, Saracens 20, Sale 13. Beautifully curated pitch, given a bit of a dusting that it didn't need midway through the first half. Protesters finding their way over the fences. The orange dye has been swept away by his eager team at half-time. And we're all set to go again. As close as we thought it might be. Saracens with that seven point cushion. Saracens in the white, Sail in the maroon. And Tom Curry drives it up. Sail, use it please. Take an ingus. Okay, let's have them. No changes to either side at half time, by the way. So those early. Sarri's changes, losing the hooker Jamie George and the winger Sean Maitland for Theo Dan and Elliot Daly. The ones we've had so far. How might replacement to row yeah, he's bend this better. game one he's way fine. or the other over what's left of this final? <laughs> oh, oh, and good has been. Yeah, agree, play on. Absolutely clobbered. He did well to hold on to the ball. John O'Ross. Up and over the windscreen very quickly. Here's good again. Wazowski goes to ground. Here's Tizard. <coughs> no line speed yet from Sale. Pace of the ball's just too much for them at the minute. Certainly Saracens have come out second half, trying to up the tempo, up the speed of delivery from breakdowns. Tompkins. Farrell, increasingly masterful in that first 40 minutes. From Sale, just too far. That's no, a good kick, that. Farrell made sure that War had very little time. Good. 
Coming in his record-breaking ninth Premiership final. He's won five of them so far. Opposite number is Joe Carpenter. Playing in his first. Outside. Malin's try, the one that has Saracens ahead. <coughs> Taken up by Carpenter. Sale, use it please. And we're on halfway. Let's go nine. Let's go then. Roebuck peers up into the sky to try to disrupt this, but um, Good was there. He's been safe and sound all match. And Sale, the opposite to Saracens. They're trying to slow down the breakdowns, go to that box kicking game, put pressure, try and force okay, an error in the back three. They're not making any ground though. Every time that Cradle sat in front of Good, he's just taking the ball with ease, and even when he doesn't, he can bounce out of tackles. Saracens! It's not like you're playing it, against a novice there in the backfield, is it's his ninth final. Johnny. Oh, Earl up there quickly to drive the ball back over halfway, but still northern ball. John O'Ross heading back to his farm in Africa cattle farm after all this is done so you've had three goes here Nick right if you don't get anything from this this is your fourth attempt to try and put pressure on you've got to think that you're just banging your head against the brick wall well they've um, earned at least the scrum here they are with the advantage still advantage to the knock curry looking this way and that and finds Thunder and he makes the break oh it was ambitious and there were lots of white shirts there, oh. but the ball's still loose, and oh. Robert! <laughs> he's only 22, and he's just enjoyed the moment of his young life so far. Scores in the Premiership final. Unbelievable from Tom Robert. How does he get to this? It looks like Saracens have it covered in the backfield, but his acceleration and that never say die attitude. And once he gets a boot on it, he still has the work to do. It's brilliant. Curry and Van der Merwe. Van der Merwe puts a speculative kick in, but that looks like it's going to be dealt with all day. But it just won't sit right. Here's the little kick through. Runs into Goode, so he can't turn daily. Taking his time, he doesn't realise he's there. Roebuck, lovely footballing skills, and the ball just kicks the right way for him on the last revolution. That is fantastic, and what a score! Well, in the end, I don't know whether Aka van der Merwe might actually have been wanting the ball to go in that direction. I thought that he'd fluff the kick. In the end, it was perfect. It's all about Elliot Daly, as Ben said, he just runs past the ball, and this is probably the experience of not playing that much on the wing. Normally, there's the guy, he's in the outside channel, that's Daly. He doesn't know that Roebuck's there, so he goes past the ball and then comes back to it so he can take it moving forwards. That creates the opportunity for Roebuck, but it's some finish, isn't it? I think what it might be, I think he thinks the ball's going to skip on and that Van Sale's going to come across, but then when it digs into the turf and stands back up, he realises he has to go himself, but he's almost got himself lost. Can well, you name all the five hookers, Nick, who can chip and chase within the 22 without it coming off their shin? There's Aka, you can have him as your first. That was his um, last involvement because he and the rest of his front row buddies have been replaced. McIntyre and Shona off for Ewan Ashman, Bevan Rod, Connie Eustace. Well, that shows the quality that Sale have in reserve for 45 minutes of front row that's been dominating at the scrum but they have plenty of quality in those positions off the bench there'll be people at home Ben watching for the first Take time the that think hold on a sec they've been dominating at the scrum they've had five minutes of the second half why take them off so early pressure on the guys coming on but you've got Bevan Rod international on the stays and then Ashman as well tearing up trees they've just got so much strength in that front five you don't 
lose anything mobility wise with them with Ashman on in particular that's nicely taken by Malins Saracens having to dig their heels in a little still ahead but now just by a point and a toe J and oh, now Dan's gone through and this is a day for the hookers and Dan on his bike off the floor beautifully to Jackson Ray final day as a Saracen Van Sale, Farrell, popped away, Daly! Just hit touch. Yeah, okay, well, okay. Try, and try and check. It'll need to be checked. Was there a stud on the touchline? If there wasn't, Saracens have responded perfectly. What a response, this Saracens team. And it's the speed they can lift up at. Atoji drifting across the field, Theo Dan spots it, cuts the angle back. It's a good tackle, but watch Atoji's clear out now on Jackson Ray. Just pulls in some of those red shirts, which means they can't get back out. Holds in Curry. Oh, oh he's at touch. You just need to check that he doesn't lift his foot back off the touchline before he actually catches it. It's hit. Yeah, he's still in touch. Oh. One stud, maybe two studs. Sharks fans off their feet in the stands. <laughs> well, we talked about Ashman being a good player. They'll be very relieved, those Sail Sharks boys, but the forwards gathering round him now, making sure everyone's got this line-out call, because what a difficult first ball to throw in for your reserve hooker. And you can bet your bottom dollar, Ezekwe and Atoji. Tizard will be patrolling, putting as much pressure on as possible. Ashman, eyes wide open. Oh, he went oh. long, and it's been dropped by Curry. And this position now for Saracens. Lazowski, Malins offers himself, and Malins drops it. And the present declined. I get away with it. It was deliberately overthrown. It was meant to go to Curry. They put a pod at the back to try and hold the tail gunner from Saracens. But the ball is an away swinger for Tom Curry. Just watch it drop down. It's just drifting away from him at the last moment and collision with Theo Dan will have come into his eye line, but then Malins maybe just got his eye on Tuolangi. Can't take the ball with him. It's a nice test for your hamstrings, isn't it? Oh, this is an opportunity. Farrell conspiring with Nick Tompkins. So many options. They've got Daly away to the left, standing next to Good. Threats wherever Sale choose to look. Advantage. And now they've got the penalty. And they'll have another go, I'm sure. That goes against Bevan Rod. Bevan Rod, really poor position, collapses scrum. Just rotated that right shot, sorry, left defense. shoulder down. Rolled the elbow underneath and ended up almost facing back Post up ball. towards the hookers. I go back to what I said before. I know Bevan Rods is a brilliant rugby player. But you're taking off three guys that are painting a picture to the referee that they're completely on top. They've got at least another 10, maybe even 15 minutes left in them. And then bring those guys back on. Swanny fast. I'm sure it was a pre-planned move from Alex Anderson, but with Saracens trying to play so fast at the breakdown, it does leave them slightly more exposed. Bevan Rod, like an extra number seven in his ability to get over the breakdown and jackal and steal the ball. But maybe not quite early on in his final, quite as strong as McIntyre was at the scrum. Well, Saracen stretch the lead to five. Saris 23, Sharks 18, and changes. Rafi Quirk on at nine for Gus War and Tom O'Flaherty taking the place of um, Tom Roebuck over on the right wing of Premiership final regular O'Flaherty in recent years with Exeter. If I'm Roebuck, I'm coming off going, I've just scored a try out of nowhere. I'm your best guy at chasing box kicks, and we've started this half only box kicking. Why am I coming off?
Thanks, Bertie. Someone tell me. Well, so oh, flat is not the worst box kick oh, chaser. Put him on the swing then. Take Reed off. He's not as good as Roebuck. Very few are. So Flaherty plays most of his rugby on the left wing anyway. I don't get it, Nick. Sorry. Saracens have uh, made a change as well in the front row. That one, Aroni Marwi, replaced by Robin Hislop. Rod holding on to possession under immense pressure. Tuolangi trying to exert some of his own. Whoa, that's what Tuolangi can do. Bend and bust defences and Dupre. It's been a while since we talked about Sale ball in hand threatening and John O'Ross looking to change that along with all of his mates. Maybe that's why Rafi works. come on, just to give them that little extra zip. Ford. Dupre, that extra distributor. Tuolangi took it to ground. Picked up by Rod, beautiful, run for the line, Ooh, and laid back, and still Rod oh, going, oh. scoring! <laughs> the look of a man who's just scored a try in the Premiership final. I said they bought Bevan Rod on as an extra number seven, he's come on as an extra number nine. Sensational at the base of the breakdown. Initially, to pick and go down the blind side, but the quality of the pass, any night of the Premiership would be proud of. Here's the Tuolangi carry that gives them that initial momentum, bounces off Tompkins, and then the leg drive takes Farrell to bring him down. But how about this ball? The pick and go round the side, cuts out one, and then he's doing what all good nines do in support, picks and goes, and then backs his strength from two metres out. That is. What an impact from Bevan Rod. What a great decision to bring him on. <laughs> At nine. Just three pieces of brilliant skill, Nick. This from George Ford for a sale lead for the first time in the final. Great kick from Ford, but what a piece of skill this is from Bevan Rod. Ben picked out the pass. He gets his body position in exactly the right place. Look at this, off the left hand, over Goode's head. Then he stays on his feet. This is really good, though. Watch his body position as he enters the rug. He picks the ball up in one motion, which means nobody can get in the defensive position, and then just backs himself to get to the line. A little fake to the outside, and then he gets there. I reckon he should be wearing nine. Definitely good idea to bring him on at this time of the game. Whatever the numbers on the shirts, the numbers on the scoreboard suddenly make interesting reading. Saracens 23, Sale 25, ahead for the first time in this Gallagher Premiership final. And the atmosphere's gone up two notches as well, hasn't it? This game's on now. From Sale, hopeful kick in field, and Tom Curry, who played such a big part in the build-up to that try, threading it no, off his foot. up that right-hand touchline. Ford, ooh. Dupre took evasive action. And the fullback, Joe Carpenter. He was four <laughs> when Jason Robinson skippered sail from fullback in 2006. <laughs> Jason Robinson and Sebastian Chabal together went on to lift the trophy that day. A rain soaked day against Leicester. Different type of day today, but the scoreboard feeling similar at the moment. Sail ahead. Ruffy. Quirk. How much he will love coming into this. Ooh, good. Down awkwardly, being chased by Reed. Hands away! Riccioni. Farrell. Advantage. Oh, that's interesting. Looking for Daly and well, Flaherty needed to be on his toes. Down and hit his legs, it's your fault. 
It's John Ross. This no, goes against. That, tries to shape himself to put his hands Charles towards down. the ball, but deliberately shapes his legs yeah, yeah, to swing through and take Owen Farrell out after he makes you, uh, the kick. You can have it here or on the 10 in the corner yeah, where he landed. 15, 15 in, yeah. 15 in from where so 15 I am. In, so 15 in from where I am. Let's have a word with um, Dan Vick as part of um, Elliot, Saracen's Elliot. coaching team, very much part of what's going on at the moment, as you can hear. Dan, top lines, what are you seeing? What are you thinking? You want to know what it's a proper final, isn't it? It's a cup final. Uh, emotional. Uh, always okay, knew it would be a battle. Time. A big physical side, aren't they? So a good side. But we've got to match them, and we have for most. There's been lots of curveballs. Uh, we've lost some experience early, but emotionally, I think we're staying in it. And, and that's been our thing. Emotionally outlasting any team. And I think with our game plan, what we want to do, we've just got to keep going, keep working at it, getting back and, and giving options. And we've talked a little bit as well over the course of the match about the fitness work that, that, that you've all put in this season, led by Phil Morrow. You're, you're, you're pretty good going into the last quarter of games this season. Oh, yeah, yeah, Phil's been, you know, incredible. Uh, but I think their contribution, yeah, as you say, has come in the weeks leading up. We don't get that sort of heat. You know, it is warm today for all the boys. Um, but this is where you want it, don't you? This 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 last twenty odd minutes um, with everything on the line. Cheers, Dan. I know you'll be watching this closely. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, mate. Elliot Daly from Hounslow. Not quite. Not quite. But he wasn't far away. He had the distance, which will slightly alarm sail sharks. No problem at all. The distance. He had another ten meters in that. You were a bit worried what that he. Took it forward a couple there, weren't you? Yeah, just wondered. We'd started to sneak. He certainly went in front of the halfway line, and Luke Pearce told him to go back behind it and steal what you can. Distract the ref enough, you get to the 10 metre. We need to keep that in mind, actually, don't we? Uh, with Elliot Daly on the pitch, the conventional concession of penalties late on uh, might be a little bit closer towards halfway. Sale have got to be really careful. Well, that's that why Sale will want to get out to more than three, and then they can defend differently in the middle third. Farrell up goes another questioning high ball. Reed. I think that um, came off Reed. Yeah. It did. Christoph Ridley, assistant referee. Says Last Saracen's ball. Saracens. Ah, change of hearts. Have another look. He's already out, is he? He's already off the field. Uh, Line-out is... Ewan Ashman. Thanks, Tom. Scotland it's International it's for the final time as a yeah. Shark. He'll be yeah, charging around for Edinburgh next season. Help. Quirk to Alangi. And then... 50-22 is still on. Rob Dupree. Bouncing ball! Oh, Bounces beautifully. Oh, and Rob Dupree doing his nuts from where the kick came. This is... Feeling all a bit sharky at the moment. <laughs> I wasn't going to quite put it like that. Bit but yeah, fur, spot bit on it. Bit just everything's just <laughs> starting to go their way. The bounces of the ball. And it's good. Expecting that just to kick on into his midriff and beats him over the top. And look at the celebrations from the Sale players. They know how big that this moment of the game is. Can they get out to more than one score? Ashman, despite the best efforts of a toe jake, was Hill who gathers it safely, now the surge, Itoje still with some work to do defensively, he's hanging on in there, but ball well protected for Ashman, but still Itoje hasn't changed his bind, so he continued to be a grit in the machine, but now the ball comes out to Alangi, centre field, oh he's blasting huge holes at the moment, Quirk away quickly, Ford back in field, five metres short, Saracen's breakdown work needs to be sharp and efficient. Well, there's a penalty, penalty well. coming, yeah, and Dugdale picks it up with that free ball. Quirk, oh, and then the burst for the ball and the line, and Ashman! Back for the penalty. Yeah, Toji nearly did a good job of stopping that ball, uh, but Marrow, at the change, end... But he collapsed the ball at the end. As you heard the referee saying there, he was entitled to be there, but he can't drag it down. Who's injured, please? Oh, Luke Pearce is um, 
first final. He's, he's come a long way since he refed his first ever game on the back pitch at Crediton. George. Crediton thirds against Newton Abbott seconds. He was saying he had a prop who would take his glass eye out before every scrum and put it in his pocket. Same with Ben with commentary, I don't yeah. know how he does it. <laughs> Doesn't have anything like that to worry about today, but my goodness, what a final he's refereed. He's had a fantastic game. I don't think he's got anything wrong yet. I don't know, that's not the kiss of death for him, but... These are huge minutes for Saracens. Huge minutes. No, no, don't yell at me, don't yell at me. Into don't the final yell at me. quarter. Jail saying there's too many Saracens on, players defending that. in the lineup. Jono Ross just pushing no, 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 one of them go, out. Good referee. A lot of movement from Hill instead. It was a short stab. He's looking for Ross. Agree. It's been one back, however. I think it was Theo Dan on the floor who got there. Onside, please. And Toji Onside, saw. Sale. Sale employing that move where they don't put a lifter up and they just run to the front and he got his hands above, ripped it back to his side and saves the day. No flaherty. A couple of losing finals in his Exeter days. Quirk. No! Ashman borrowed it in. Out it comes for Ford and up into the fullback involving himself. Oh, and then the work of early wasn't far away. Dupree. <laughs> oh, flatty. No long lasting damage. Saracens are so hard at the breakdown. Two players at every single breakdown competing. Curry. Oh, got it away nicely in Dupree. Farrell invites him to um, step Can't off the pitch. Saracens yeah. are going to make a change. Callum Hunter Hill set to um, come into the second row. You'd imagine it would be for Hugh Tizard. Oz, what have you got? Just Ben saying about how hard Saris are going at the breakdown. You need really good clear outs. Bevan Rod, this is a really good example because Oflati is actually quite isolated. Look how open the rook is. Farrell's over the top, but he comes in and within a split second, one man, arguably from the side, but he gets him off the ball and gets away with it. If you box kick and then get a turnover, you think of the territory you gain, you find yourself in the other half, then, then it, you know, you're only two points behind, then you're back in control of the game. Currently in their own 22, they're under the cosh. That's why they're going really hard at the breakdown, trying to get those penalties. But another good reason why you bring Bevan Rod on so early. <laughs> the sound of backtracking. It's loud and clear in this second yeah, half. More moonwalking, Nick, sure. I think we'll find. Callum Hunter-Hill, by the way, recovering in time from a lengthy spell away with a knee injury to um, to impact on these closing months of the season. Uh, he's on to play in his first final, replacing somebody who's just played in his first, Hugh Tizard. Into the final quarter. I've been saying all match that Saracens are so strong this season in the final quarter that extra fitness work that they've been more. putting in well they need it now they need it now more than ever we've already seen a few of them but it's a strong sale bench isn't it still hey, some other on. bodies to come on don't change Bevan don't change and we've got Josh Beaumont Tom Ellis Sam James and Flaherty has already joined us and he does his job and off he goes couldn't get it back cleanly enough. It's quite difficult sometimes when you're running back to support your winger who's coming forward at full tilt because he goes past you and you have to turn around and get back up to speed and the opposition can come straight in so often wingers can get isolated when they come past their support players. Watch them all running back, O'Flaherty finds a way through, does really well but then he runs straight into a wall of white shirts with no red shirts able to get there quickly enough. Saracens changing midfield, Alex Lazowski off, Duncan Taylor on. Final appearance after a dozen years with the club for Taylor. Farrell, Daly coming in off his wing, he's been with us for a while, very early change for Sean Maitland. Hunter Hill. Tompkins still the original remaining centre. Farrell switching things, that battle for control between Farrell and Ford continues to captivate. 
Hill going in, tries to disrupt things, and Saracens find themselves back with their toes on halfway. OK, Sarri's used, please. Carpenter. Mm, not quite. Daly got his hands to it first, but it's Curry who comes away with it. Oh, and no Flaherty went backwards. He's still got a bit of um, remedial work to do because Taylor and Co were on him so quickly. He's done very well. He did because Duncan Taylor held him on the floor in the tackle and then moved his body position to try and make it easy for the Jackal. Nice to fight his way back to getting his body on the right side. Take it steady, Callum. Take it steady. Thank you. <coughs> oh, that's a sensible kick. Just looking at trying to catch fatigue players out. You Mate. see Owen Farrell switching the direction, but look at Sale's first. line speed on the other side. Really important. Both sides of the breakdown go up and you Seven don't get caught by a slight Time change in tactic or a change in direction. Do really, really well there, Sale, to stay alive. 65 minutes into the game, it's nice and hot. Just making sure everyone stays switched on. Well, you may have seen we've got one or two changes going on over the summer. This is the last Premiership final after 10 years that we will show on BT Sport. We're having a, a change of name in July. We're becoming TNT Sports. We will still bring you all the usual stuff, the Gallagher Premiership, the Premier League, Champions Cup, just repackaged. New box, same goodies, bit of a paint job. New name, same game, I believe, is our phrase. And uh, we've got still lots more rugby to bring you before the end of the season here on BT Sport. The women's Allianz Premier 15 heading to the point where they hand out the medals. Semi-finals weekend in a fortnight. And then we'll have the final as well on Saturday, June the 24th. Tompkins. Oh. Saracens with plenty of work to do before their season ends. They've got 15 minutes left. Reed getting the applause. Sales defence in the story this season, how good they've been. Being tested there, it's good movement from Saracens, but Elliot Daly, all his momentum going towards the touchline as he broke into the defensive line, and they all just converged on him and drove him towards the touchline. Same as a turnover if you die with the ball in touch. Tapped back by Ezekwe. Ray. And he's got 15 minutes left as a Saracens player. And sail. Good. One bounce into the arms of Carpenter. Charge down. Taylor. Big frame to get beyond. And Taylor and Sale now in a right old mess. Ben Earl screaming for it away to the right. It goes to the left. Lifted out by a sequence. Try score. Elliot Daly this time. Sale doing well. We've talked about the impacts of the men off the bench and Duncan Taylor. Immediate, <laughs> superb intervention. And this game is going to go right down to the wire. There's the charge down. Absolutely brilliant. Keeps running forward, puts pressure on Reed. They turn him over, and then his equate seeing a disrupted defensive line in front of him. Bevan Rod can't get into position. It's a two on one. He gives it daily early, trusts his pace with 15 meters in that wide yes, channel. Working, and daily always going to have the outside arc on Rob Dupree. Saracens back in front. This is a big, big conversion for Owen Farrell. It's a tough one. There's a gentle breeze licking around the place.
What a Farrell. What of the kick. No, not quite. 28-25. Ugo picked it up at half-time, actually. The big area of problems for Sales in their backfield be where they're standing. The pendulum's not working. You've got two fullbacks effectively, but watch how good the kick is. It just puts indecision. Neither one of them goes and takes it on the full, and that enables the charge down to get really close. If that pendulum's got more movement in it, Nick, and you can have one guy centrally, those sorts of things don't happen. There's a lot of space in Sales' backfield, and it's been well exploited there by Saris. Sam James on in Sales midfield for Manu Tuolangi. He will not influence this final any further. Restart. Snaffle by Atoje. Man of the match when Saracens were last champions in 2019 when they beat Exeter. And now a dozen minutes away from repeating that, but this match, this match, <laughs> swung this way and that. It's just got extra time written all over it, Nick. Ashman lays it back on the 10 metre. Take that as a yes. Rod. <laughs> well, I nodded my head and I realised that doesn't work on yeah, television. Yeah, doesn't work, really. No. Sorry, let's turn you back up, Austin. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, the, the work that Tom Curry is getting through at the moment. And then the drive from Hill. He's had another huge game as well. Ford. What does he have? Runs into his old mate. Farrell. Oh, backwards, play on. That's a knock-on advantage. Mm. Saracen drip it back. Advantage over. Fonseil chases his own kick, but look where Tom O'Flady is. Back in his own 22 and no messing around with that kick. That is very, very impressive and hard work from Saracens. Riccioni's just gone down with cramp. Didn't really, like really chase that kick, but... That might mean Time Christian Judge needs to come on for Saracens. But ben Earl, nothing wrong with his engine, putting pressure on O'Flaty, forcing the kick a little <laughs> bit <laughs> nearer towards O'Flaty's own <laughs> goal line, which means Saracens will have prime attacking position just outside the 22. Saracens are going to make a change at um, scrum half. Ivan van Sale. Pivotal work this season, rewarded with a new two-year contract, but he will watch the rest of this final like the, the, the rest of us as a spectator. Ali Davis is, is on, he's recovered just in time from a hamstring injury to make this. Missed the last five games, not quite ready for the semi-final, but oh, what a ten minutes to go. Sorry, Both of you have been in this situation, in big finals, this, this close, you've been behind and, the, and ahead. What are the big names? What are the big players saying now? What are what is every player thinking? Calmness. Well, that's the key. Don't make a stupid error. But equally, you have to go and win this game. You can't hold on to a lead if you're a Saracens player. You have to force the tempo. And this is exactly what they'll want. A nice tight drive. Get on the front foot. Give a platform for the forwards. Don't change, Bevan. Try and force Bevan, Sale change. to give away a penalty. Thank you, good option five. Fonseil, oh, that's nicely done, beautiful. Malins gets it away. Daly back to good to Fonseil. Oh, one big stretch and he'll get there. Oh, he's been held up. Brilliant, brilliant sail defence. But that bust initially from Malins looked like it had to lead to a try. What a turnaround this is for Sail because this is a try all day long. You reckon you scored, don't you? I reckon something at the ball's touching it. OK, well... It's Hill it's very stepping tight. forward that creates Tom the gap back on the inside. On OK, so... Um, we checked one in the first half for Akers, so it's only fair that we check the Saris one. So, on field, no try, held up, goal line restart. OK, so we're looking for compelling evidence <laughs> of a grounding again. OK, That's just bear not with enough me, to overturn Thank the on-field decision. This might be the angle. See that. Tacks the ball. So, on his... I hand underneath the at the moment, the still tackle. arm underneath. Carpenter's done an amazing job. So the Is there any ball on the floor? No, nothing there that can turn.
shots. Just bear with me. This angle over might the give you another decision. idea. It's not oh. over the shoulder and clips him as it goes over. Still his hands don't under don't it there, arms under no. it. Oh, Doesn't that touch? That touches for me. I don't think enough to overturn the decision. What the point of the ball on the line? That's a try. We've got one more. Let's have a listen. Let's have a listen. Point to the ball now, Nick. Is it down? Held up there, held up there. That's down now. No, it's That's a try. Down. That's a try. You can't overturn the decision on that. I think you can. Yeah, this is good. Let's listen to Tom Foley. He's doing his work. We're just going to go back to that last This is the better angle, isn't it? We think the point of the ball touches the line. Just bear with me. This is all on you, Tom. I was on sale and said the ball was down. Just a little bit of it. And a little bit of it is enough. And I think Tom Foley agrees with it. So the ball there is in the air. Yeah. We're just looking to see. So it's got a hand under it at the, at the moment. We're just yeah. going to see if that ball touches the line. It's clearly over the line. There. Uh, well, touches yeah, that's, the line. Maybe that. that's a try. Yeah. It's compelling evidence that the ball touches the line. Therefore, over to yeah. the on-field decision and award the try. Well, well also, I was wrong. You were wrong. For the second time in this final, a critical intervention from the TMO. TMO Tom says try. That is a biggie. It's a long way back now for the Sharks. Yeah, it's huge. And obviously a slightly easier conversion attempt for Owen Farrell here as well. Sharks are going to have to completely change their style of play. He spoke about what will be being said by the senior players under the post. They're going to have to chase this game now. They'll want it to open up. Have they got enough time? They'll have to take risks. They risk conceding more scores. Owen Farrell has led his team superbly and an opportunity to just nail another nail in the coffin. And for a 10-point lead in the final 10. Owen Farrell. He's got it as well, Nick. And what a pass as it was to set it up. We said it in the first half, you can't leave inside channels open. Look how wide this channel is. It's a good 11 metres. He operates the lovely ball, but then Malins is sensational. Instead of just going through and running for the line himself, he runs away and gets back to his support and puts in a wonderful pass to set up the try. One of the reasons that, that gap was so wide, Johnny Hill had come through to try and disrupt them all. Should have just stayed in the guard position. Sam James. So it's a penalty to Yes, it is, yeah. Yes! Overran, made contact with the lifter. That's a great one. Overran, hit the lifter. Just stumbles, doesn't he? The guys are on the ball, just stumbles into the front lift. That causes the ball to be dislodged. We mentioned, Nick, how good Saracens are in the final quarter. They're 12-0 in this last 20 minutes. Talking about, we spoke about their fitness and all the work they've done in pre-season. And it's only in the last 20 minutes of the season that you really start to see it bear fruit. Incredible comeback this has been from those guys. Yeah, no rush. Hold on, mate. You change. Hang on. Wait, number seven. Josh sale. Beaumont has um, has come on for sale. I think for Sam Dugdale. Special moment for Beaumont, having worked so hard after injury threatened to end his career, and with his dad Bill watching behind us in the West End, who made a few stories of his own, captaining England back in the day. But it's in Saracens' hands right now. Tompkins. Saracens, use it, please. Can sail the scorer of perhaps the critical try. Christian Judge. Just come on for Marco Riccioni. Four years on from his last Premiership final for the club. Yeah, Luke, we're going to have a look at this. Stop. Slow the game. Time off. That's good, that's good. Oh, a clash of heads or something here. 
Right, Luke, there is a glancing head contact on Johnny Hill. I'm just Johnny going to Hill's show the man who's gone down backwards. Right, so we're in a formal review then, Tom. Yes. They are formally okay, reviewing so this. The of a Saracens player yes. I think it's Ben Earl. Making contact with Hill, are we? Yeah, it's just a glancing contact, but I'm going to show it to you okay, now. Show me the angle, please. It's Ben Earl that comes in, is it? It's Hill. Okay, so it's as Hill standing up, he actually, I don't think there's a lot in there to clear okay, so out. It is his fault because he's hitting in the head. We're now looking at level of danger. Yeah. I see it as glancing, but it is direct to a yellow card. I agree at the moment, we're just going to see if there's any mitigation, just okay. bear with me. It's a Hislop, is it? Player, is it? It's Hislop. Hislop. Hislop, loose, uh, replace a loose, isn't it? Yes, number 17. It's a yellow one. Yeah. yeah. No, is it not similar to the James one before? Uh, Really low, really low. It's, 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 it's a rock, so it's not a tackle. It's a different, know, but different action. It's operating, it's operating. This is that's where we are at the moment. I know, but that's where we are. Owen, oh, Owen, oh, 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 There's no, oh, there's no clear mitigation. We stick with the yellow. Thank you. And it's, uh, it's a yellow. It's not a red, but it's still frustration for for Robin Hislop. Are you having a HIA, Johnny? Uh, and unless we go to extra time, you'd imagine that uh, that's his final. Well, they have. Um, they've always revelled when they've had a bit on their plate, Saracen. To man down, but they've got that 10 point lead, and Owen Farrell leading from the front. But a window opening perhaps for Sale and for George Ford. Owen, sorry, man. Just question? adds a little, little glimmer of hope for Sale, doesn't it? You should see out the rest of normal time if it comes down to that. Come off the with a man advantage, can they make use of it? Can they open this Thank game you. up? Like a Rafi Quirk. Now the change at scrum half that we uh, talked about earlier. Davis is on for fun sale. Oh, and still Ashman continuing to keep Saracens on their toes. And John O'Ross, one last adventure for him before retirement. What can he do to impact on this score? Sam James as well. Ford. Ooh, no way through for Carpenter, that door slamming on his fingers. Now Saracens think it might be their ball. Atoje over the top. And it's um, laid back in the end by O'Flaherty, so still Sale and still Ford and holds it up. And James, he's caught in midfield by Mayans. And then that's stolen and Dan hammers it away. Oh, shut up. There's a kick to win a final. Have a word with yourself. Theo Dan, do you think he enjoyed that? Spiral off the right, picked up round the corner. 50 22. Put the medal over my neck, will you? The tackle from Maylands is superb. Stops the offload, goes high. Evan Rod can't deal with it on the floor. And then the instant reaction from Theo Dan. As I said, gets the spiral out, drops it perfectly just in the field of play. And look at the realisation from the Sale players. He's wondering. He'll be back as a shark next season. Speculation about his future ended recently when he signed up for at least one more season. Tom in the back. <laughs> Alex Anderson, 17 years as a player, then coach with Saracens, winning everything along the way. So much emotion for him this week. Plotting against his mentor Mark McCall, but at the moment it is McCall and it is Saracens, and time is running out for Sale and for Sanderson. Taylor adds his weight to this rolling, rumbling more. Why the squeeze the clock on us? Down by Saracens. A turnover. Unsuccessful more. But the clock keeps ticking oh, down in. Tough place to get out. Sale, aren't they? Really tough to get out from this corner. Jackson. Jackson. 
Well done, mate. Uh, oh, Roni Maui uh, is back on because we don't have Rob in his lot. Um, so Jackson Ray is sacrificed and for the final time, for the final time as a Saracens player, what he has given this club, what he's given this game. Wherever life takes Jackson Ray, we wish him all the best. The end of his um, 309th game as a Saracen. All those international players that have been around for Saracens for so long, but... Sorry, this is the guy under pressure. Standing up, look up. Soft, really soft from Saracen. Don't back away from... Don't back away. Maybe stepping back, but definitely standing up. You want to scrum again? It's a free kick, but they might choose to go down again. Put another one down. Just having a closer look, really, at the backfield here. And the guy that's going to be under the most pressure because Sale have to go wide, it's going to be Duncan Taylor. To do that, they're going to try and have to stand up. So, what that will look like is a long pass to begin with from nine, just getting it away from the base here, getting forward in motion. You can get forward in motion, he immediately has to look at him. He has to close his outside shoulder, Taylor, turn in. If Ford stands and delivers, that three connected there, 10, 12, 13, can just stay together. Ford in a hurry. Three minutes to go. Sale two scores down. Uh, beaten, going backwards, standing up. Local hero decided to come home to, uh, to help raise the volume in the north. He helped get sail to a cup final but is that as good as it's going to get something special needed now taken by ellis first player to play for three clubs in the premiership season tom ellis played for saracens against sale back in march and now doing what he can to beat saracens forward acting as scrum half ross time ticking away on his life as a professional player Carpenter, as he has done all season, keeps pedalling. Ross, away nicely to Dupree and Farrell and Hill. Just not being able to find that space, Ben, ball in hand often enough. There was a little bit of a raised elbow there, but Saracens have done so well at plugging gaps. The intensity of their line speed has been absolutely superb. They knew they had to win the physicality. But Theo Dan, since he came on, has been superb at that. Now Reed on his bike. Everyone trying to keep up with him, including Taylor. Ball's gone forwards. And Daly looking for his own 50-22. Tired limbs chasing it back. Ford gets there first, but look who was there chasing him. And... Oh, now Farrell's gone down with Cramp. On we go. Nearing the final minute of what has been a, a compelling Gallagher Premiership final. Full of stories. Full of ebbs and flows. And Sale working now on memory. Ross. What he has given us down his wonderful magnificent career rod when he scored that try and sale moved ahead we'd have all wondered but we all knew it was saracens 30 seconds to go hill ford hill oh Roebuck has to go backwards, Dan inevitably with the chase, with the scrap, over the ball. <laughs> Sale still have it, but look at the clock. Tom Curry. A countdown with a London accent tells us that time's up. Luke Pierce knows that, Sale know that.
but it's been such a magnificent season for them. They're looking to end it on a hurrah, at least with something to take back with them. That long trip north, it won't be the trophy. That's going Saracen's way. Northern dream shattered. For Saracens, a year old itch scratched. This time, it is good Saracens tears. This time, it is Saracens. They've won the final by 35 points to 25. What an amazing comeback from Saracens. It told you everything about their spirit. They were knocked in the early 10 minutes. They lost Mako von Apola pre-match. They lost Jamie George after about eight minutes. Two massive leaders, and yet still they had the capacity to see this through. What a group of players. What a club they've got there. And it's difficult to pick one guy normally, but there were some monumental performances across the team. Max Malins, I thought, was absolutely sensational. Ben Earl is a proper dynamo. He just never stops. But this game was about taking opportunities when they were presented and controlling matters. And for that reason, Owen Farrell is our winner of the Peter Deacon medal. What a player this guy is. The numbers speak for themselves, but they don't tell the whole story. Oh, Peter Deacon, a, a wonderful man who worked his marketing magic at both Sale and Saracens. Ben, growing the popularity of the game, he loved rugby. He knew how to encourage others to fall in love with it, and that would have um, certainly been a game to encourage lots of others to fall in love with this game. But but a, but a word for Sale, how far they've come. Well, to add to what Austin said, Saracens fully deserved it. Led the league all year. Amazing performance in the final, but Sale equally as consistent. They've taken their club to a new level under Alex Sanderson. A lot of youth, a huge amount of youth. And you'd expect, if they carry on on the curve that they're on currently, it won't be another 17 years before we see, see Sale Sharks in the final. And it certainly won't be another 17 years before we see them win it. There'll be a lot of emotion, a lot of pain amongst those Sale Sharks players. But they're the sort of scars that often players have to go through, teams have to go through to learn out what's to learn what's required to win a big final. Saracens have been through those emotions themselves and they've gone on and dominated English rugby. They're still doing that now. And these young sale players will hope to emulate that and hopefully one day surpass it. You heard um, Alex Sanderson after the semi-final telling us that he thought Tom Curry had run his blood to water in that semi-final against Leicester. That there wasn't a, a sale player who didn't run their blood to water again today, but even in defeat, my goodness, he was immense. He was, and you know, he obviously was yellow carded, came back on, made an immediate impact as soon as he came back onto the field. And you know, there's some tough decisions for Steve Borthwick to make but you're pretty convinced that he'll certainly be going to France, Tom Curry, and he's definitely in pole position to hold on to that number seven shirt, albeit wearing six today. But another huge performance from him. Mara Toji starting to rediscover some of his best form. Real nuisance in and around everything Sale tried to achieve.